Hey guys, this is Torn and today we're going to be talking about 2025 set and mechanic predictions. I personally like kind of like thinking about the future and everything, kind of going in depth and thinking about what we could potentially be seeing and, you know, when announcements happen, I like to kind of already have my predictions out there so that way I can be like, hey, look, I was right kind of thing. Uh, it, it's always a fun kind of game for me to kind of think about what I would like to see and what ends up kind of happening. Uh, so I've gone through the stuff that's been announced officially for next year. I'm going to give you like what has been announced and then what my predictions are. So that way you can kind of separate the both of them and stuff. Uh, so an intro here, 2025 full schedule hasn't been revealed yet. Like the foundation set, it's likely there's going to be some surprises around. Uh, the Marvel and Final Fantasy sets that are coming out next year are going to be full tent pole set, meaning they're going to be similar to that Lord of the Rings set, like legal in standard most, uh, sorry, legal in modern most likely, have commander precons and, you know, all that kind of stuff to kind of go alongside them. They're going to have you know the draftable and everything and again thanks to jack john jackson and cat scythe for letting me bounce ideas off of them and make sure you guys subscribe if you guys like this kind of content and let me know down below if you do like this kind of content as well so starting out we've got the death race slash multiplayer race so this is happening in february uh it is a race that's going to take place across three different planes so we're going to start in one plane then go to the next one and next one and using the omen pass to kind of race between them so the two planes that are going to be featured here that have never been revisited since we've been to there the first time and then a third one that's never been featured in a set it's just been seen in other sets now there's also only going to be two commander precons we know this from the ultra pro i believe it was or ultimate guard um announcements of like the i think can't remember if it was the deck boxes or the play mats but there was only like a commander a and commander b one so you know it's very likely there's only two commander precons which is very very interesting so this is my kind of predictions here. Uh, as for the three different areas, I think Kaladesh is going to be one because I, that just makes sense, right? It's a tech focused place. There's a whole bunch of vehicles and everything like that. Uh, Vryn as well kind of ties into Jace and the Mage Rings and it's one that's never been featured. It's just been shown. And then Amon Ket is one that we haven't revisited since, but it's a way for them to kind of add in like those Mad Max kind of racing through the desert and a wasteland kind of thing. Um, and kind of see the what's happened to all of these areas since like the Phyrexians and all everything. Uh, so I think there's going to be a focus on like vehicles, obviously vehicles and mounts uh, and then energy potentially from Kaladesh. And then I think jumpstart would work like jumpstart's a very interesting one. Um, and I think it kind of suits Vryn because some of the cards that we've seen from Vryn, uh, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, have been like discarding cards and stuff. So Jumpstart kind of makes sense for that. And I think there's going to be a new mechanic similar to Exert, which was in Amonkhet, that's going to be like Nitros, right? Like you exert your vehicle to go faster or something. I don't, I don't know. That would make sense to me at least. And, and given it that it's in the middle of this like Dragon Storm arc, I'm guessing that we see Rel kind of go along and it's following to kind of catch up with Jace uh, before he goes over to Tarkir. Um, and the fact that it's like, you know, in Vryn would make sense. And I hope that it kind of ties into like this overarching story that's going on. I do think that plane chase coming back would make a lot of sense. While in the actual only, like in the actual set, we might only see three different planes. It wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if we kind of have more over like the course of it or something like that, that we see in the, like a plane chase uh, for commander, obviously. Uh, and we'll most likely see more dragons kind of showing up because they're going everywhere nowadays. I would love to see these omen path lands as well and i think this would be a great set to kind of have them in these are essentially lands that have vanishing on them and as the kind of omen paths that would make a lot of sense kind of showing up here in this set that's kind of featuring around and using the omen paths as like the whole kind of story thing um and I really hope that we finally see the dangers of the Omen Pass and Omen Pass traveling because so far they've kind of shown the Omen Pass, but then we've seen everyone kind of going back and forth between them. And there's been no dangers despite the fact they're going like, these are dangerous. And then everyone's just like, let me just walk through here. Oh, look, I'm over here. Um, 
Next up in April, we have the Return to Tarkir. Now, this is meant to combine the best features of cards and dragons of Tarkir. It will, it will include dragons, they confirm that, and it's going to be the ending of this Dragon Storm arc. So, this part here is like a little bit of summary. They said, after Ugin left Tarkir, dragon storms on the plane have gone out of control. In combination with the newly formed Omen Path, this has resulted in Tarkir dragons appearing on other planes. We saw that already with Bloomborough. So, like, obviously, Obviously, there's going to be a, some kind of storyline kind of tying into here, whether it's us putting all the dragons back where they belong or who knows. Uh, it's definitely likely going to be a triome slash three color set. Uh, stick with me here. The original kind of Khan slash dragons of Tarkir and Fates Reforge was based around kind of changing Tarkir's fate and Sarkhan going back and changing time and you know that kind of stuff like you know fixing things up and then he goes back into the future and everything's changed and the dragons are back and the khans like you know some of them are dead and some of them are just weaklings and stuff um I think that this is going to kind of tie into Jace's overall star, uh, story arc and what he's planning on doing here because he wants to remake the universe, right? To stop the Phyrexian stuff that all happened. So this kind of ties in a lot story-wise to what happened here, in my opinion. Uh, we'll also likely see how the dragons and Khans have been working together since the Phyrexian invasion because we know that when that happened, there was dragons and Khans that kind of, you know, teamed up together um, and kind of bonded together from it from that. Uh, likely, you know, we're going to see Formidable slash Ferocious coming back with a big kind of red green stompy kind of dragon. It's the uh, uh, Morph and Manifest. I wouldn't be surprised if that comes back. And it honestly wouldn't surprise me if we see five Commander Precons from this set, which I know people want kind of less product, but I think that this would be the set that five Commander Precons would make the most sense for and do one for each kind of three color set there. Um, and kind of have each one of them going around like a different kind of dragon clan and a different like the Khans that kind of were kind of teamed up with them. So like Jeskai and um, Abzan and stuff like that. Then we've got the universes beyond Final Fantasy. So this is obviously a crossover with Final Fantasy, full set boosters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It will feature references apparently from the main game entries from the first game all the way up to sixteen. So. So potential mechanics that wouldn't be surprising if it comes back, party mechanic. Final Fantasy is all about making a party and kind of balancing that party, right? And kind of bringing your party all together. Backgrounds, I would love to see backgrounds back. Now, I don't know how that would work in like a non-commander product, but backgrounds I think would make the most sense to kind of come back here. And it could also be like that could be within one of the commander products instead. Legendary matters, obviously, like, you know, the whole Final Fantasy series is these big kind of characters that everybody loves. Uh, the later games, like the beginning games, kind of, it's more like you're building your own characters and stuff, which kind of goes into the next one with like classes coming back, experience counters as well. It's literally a video game where you go get experience and rank yourself up and stuff. Experience counters would be huge within that. Uh, and then maybe some like minor mounts slash vehicle stuff. There's a few different games where, you know, whether it's a Chocobos or you're getting up on the e airship or something along those lines, where you could do some kind of big stuff with that. Now, I do think that this could have a big kind of dual-faced cards, double-sided classes and stuff like that. So, like, double-sided classes where you kind of rank up the class and then when you get to the end, it's exile it and return it flipped and it comes back and, then like, instead of you being a gunner, you're in a... a Dragoneer or whatever. I don't know. Uh, likely a big focus on equipment as well. Cause you know, you go, you equip your characters and stuff with all, all these different, you know, some legendary, some just normal kind of swords and stuff. Uh, one that, um, my friend suggested, my uh, Jack John Jackson suggested was either form changing bosses that were represented by dual face. So like on one side is when you first verse the boss. And then on the other side, it's like their final form or the one that he actually suggested that I absolutely love is sagas that flip into the boss. So similar to like the uh, Neon Neo Kamigawa ones where you're kind of going through like the story, like the saga, and then he flips over into the, like, like a boss or something. Instead, it's like the primary side is like their abilities throughout the fight, right? So it's like, you know, deal four damage to everyone, et cetera, et cetera. And then you flip it over and it's the boss in their kind of final form. 
So we were thinking about what the pre-cons could be here because, you know, there's a few different ways they could make this. Uh, the ones that I liked that we kind of came to was likely four different pre-cons. The first one based around those RPG elements and uh, from the OG games and like the MMOs. So you're looking at like, you know, backgrounds, parties, etc. Then the next one based on protagonists and legendaries matters, maybe historics. So like, you know, you've got Cloud as like the leader of this, etc. Uh, one based around all the villains and stuff. And then one based around like magic and spell slinging. And I really hope that one includes time with like time count as like a big kind of thing. The other thing with Final Fantasy is that there are literally five different magic types in that game that are named after the five different colors that we've got uh, for mana in uh, like, uh, like, you know, in uh, magic, which is black, white, red, blue, green. So that would kind of work so well with magic as well. All right, we've got the space opera set in Q3. So this is obviously located in outer space. It's beginning of the third and last arc in the overall story. So the the second arc of that story wraps, wraps up within... Um, within Return to Tarkir. And then the third arc is going to start with this space opera set. Now, they've also shown different planets and stuff like that in the concept art and aliens. We really don't know much about this one. But... I really hope that we see these planet kind of world enchantments. This is actually really, really cool. Um, I love the idea behind this kind of where you're like going and you're like, essentially you've got like a planet that you can trade in your resources to and stuff. Um, my wife absolutely loves board games. We love, uh, I love them too. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that you could easily see within a board game where you're like, you know, trading in your resources and stuff like that, which would just be really interesting and a really unique thing. Very likely an artifacts matter set as well, whether it's robots, spaceships, space equipments. And I do think that it's going to be very heavy on the nose Star Wars themed. We also might see some reprints for some like in-universe Doctor Who style cards. I do think that we could see battles returning as well, where it's like space battles and capturing planets and stuff. Uh, and I do think as well that it could be like a tribal slash kindred set where each color is represented by a different alien species. Not like a full kind of like Lorwyn, Shadowmoor kind of thing, but more like an Innistrad, Bloomborough, where it's like you know, this is the the color and it's got red, but there are all these, this type of alien, but that type of alien's like, you know, fast or something like that. All right, we've got then return to Lorwyn. Uh, so this is going to be a return to Lorwyn slash Shadowmoor. Uh, and it is new design sensibility though. So think more like Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, where they take the thing and the nostalgia that you love from that lore and then update it more into how they kind of make sets nowadays and the more d modern kind of design technologies. That doesn't mean it's going to be a modern based world where, you know, you go into, you know, the Neon Dynasty kind of thing. It's just going to be using their kind of more modern based uh, design. Uh, we do know that goblins, kithkin, fairies and elves are returning. I doubt we see humans on it, but we'll see. Like, you know, maybe some humans have gone over there from Omen Pass. So I do think that this is going to be very similar to like, you know, Bloomborough, where it's going to be like a kindred slash tribal based set, but this time not like the full focus where, you know, all of the goblins and you got to run all the goblins together. Instead, it's like, you know, the goblins all have, say, persist or something like that. And then, you know, you can do stuff along those lines. Changelings, obviously, this is a great set to kind of bring changelings with. I do think we'll see a new version of both champion and clash. Clash is an amazing keyword, but it just, it like the way they kind of... Um, price the cards in terms of mana it means that if you fail to win the clash then it really really sucks so i think we could see a great new version of that and i think a great new version of champion and i would love to see them bring this thought weft so this was in um the uh mystery boosters 2 as well which is essentially kind of like backup where you like share around your keywords and stuff but this time it was like a passive so this says kithkin you control have thought weft so a creature with thought weft has all printed keywords keyword abilities of other creatures you control with thought weft it's a way for them to kind of build up like this very interesting kind of tribal based set um where, you know, you can have, like, your legendaries have this kind of thing. Similar to how the legendaries in Bloomborough kind of tie, say, for example, uh, what is his name? Give, Gev. Gev kind of ties all the uh, lizards together and has stuff to do with lizards. This is a way they can have, like, the other legendaries do stuff like that. 
So I do think we'll have like, you know, four precons based around different tribes as well. And I do think it'll be a mix of the OG Law Win and Shadow Maw mechanics. All right, now the final one, which is the one that I'm probably most excited for, but that's because I'm a huge freaking Marvel nerd, uh, is the universes beyond Marvel. We don't know when this is happening. I assume it's going to be Q3, end of Q3, start of Q4 kind of thing. Uh, so this is the first of several Magic the Gathering sets for Marvel, and they are working with Marvel Comics. So unlikely that it's going to be MCU. Um, we might have like a... Like, you know, uh, some kind of bonus sheet that's MCU or like a secret letter that's MCU based. Who knows? It's also led by Mark Rosewater, who loves Marvel, loves comic book stuff. So I'm glad. Uh, and as you can see here, I've done a whole bunch of guesses. So it, I think an easy guess is it's going to be legendary matters or just kind of historic, like, you know, artifacts, sagas, legendaries all make a huge amount of sense for like universes beyond, uh, sorry, for, for Marvel, like a saga of like the secret invasion or something like that could do some huge things. So some re returning mechanics that I would see easily, you know, I think that they could potentially bring back nearly every single mechanic. Like for example, the hand you could have with ninjutsu with, you know, Electra has an ninjutsu and, um, you know, like there's a lot of different things like Nobu and stuff like that. Just build, but you could build almost a whole deck around ninjutsu just with the hand characters. So, um, some that I do think that are more likely definitely return and be more focused on is stuff like partner. Partners are huge within Marvel. Like, you know, Hawkeye and Black uh, Black Widow and, you know, Gambit and Rogue and stuff along those lines would be just really great. We've got like Clue and Treasure and Junk Tokens all make a lot of sense within this universe. Uh, like Clue, like, you know, you've got like Jessica Jones who goes and investigates and stuff like that. Treasure is like the villains going and raiding the banks or something. Junk, you've got like... Iron Man in the um, cave building the Iron Man, like the OG Iron Man outfit and stuff. It's, it's a bunch of different ways they can make use of all this stuff. Curses, you've got like, you know, Scarlet Witch and Loki and all those kind of magic, Agatha, magic-based characters that can do a huge amount of curses and stuff. Vehicles, you know, you've got like... Um, like uh, even like the Iron Man suits are t potentially vehicles or, you know, you've got like the fight, uh, fantastic Four, like the fantastic car and all that kind of stuff. Huge amount of vehicles, the, the spaceships as well. Like, you know, the lot great stuff there you've got spree. So whether it's villains doing spree or like, you know, the heroes kind of doing, um, like going on a spree of crime fighting or something a mass, you know, you've got, uh, like aim Hydra Ultron, like, you know, a huge amount of characters that can amass these big armies and stuff. And then villainous choice, I think would be great in this. So I do think they'll bring in like a new kind of team up mechanic. So like where they go into fight together and they get bonuses or something like that. Like if you attack with the character that has the team up that matches you, or even just attack with a team up character, then you get buffed up kind of thing. Uh, but also they could bring in like the team up cards similar to, um, March of the Machines, so like, you know, a card that is just Captain America and Iron Man, and you've got Captain America down there holding the shield, Iron Man uni using the, um, like his uni beam onto it and stuff. Like, there's a great amount of ways so they can use that. And then finally, for like the pre cons, these are the four that I kind of settled on. I think they'll do like two different villainous ones and then two different hero ones. So, like an Avengers and then X Men. Uh, so, Avengers being like Legendaries Matter, where you've got like, you know, all the like big legendary um, Avengers, and then you've got X Men. Now, the thing with the X Men one is that you don't necessarily need to use like all legendaries for it because you could use stuff like the Morlocks or like it could just be mutants like that could be based around teaming up and working together and partner and stuff because no offense to the Avengers but I think the X-Men kind of do more of those big kind of team up kind of working together and using their powers together than the Avengers tend to do the Avengers tend to be like come together to fight a big threat and then kind of go off more while the X-Men like this team that kind of work together more You've got Hydra, so I think that's going to be based around, like, you know, amassing and minions and tokens and stuff. And then you've got, like, Sentinels, where that could be artifact creatures. And, you know, uh, even that could be tokens and summoning, like, you know, a, have, like, a Master Mold that's summoning a whole bunch of different Sentinel creatures and stuff. And that could even use a mass, too, like, you know, kind of an artifact matters kind of based around that uh, that kind of Sentinel stuff. 
So let me know what your thoughts are. Um, as you can see, you know, Marvel's the one that I'm most excited for, but honestly, all of these are pretty exciting. Uh, I think the one that I'm least excited for is probably the space opera one, just because I'm kind of more cautious about it. And I do not like the idea of the death race one, but what are you guys excited for? What are you guys not excited for? Have a great day. Goodbye.